Let's talk about the legendary commander Hannibal Barca, who stood at the helm of Carthage during the confrontation with Rome. Despite what many people know about this era, details that may elude most are also important. A series of Punic Wars took place between Carthage and the Roman Empire between 246 and 146 BC in the Mediterranean. Three major wars have left their mark on history. The Carthaginians, whom the Romans called Punians, clashed with Rome, and in the end, Rome won, selling the entire population of Carthage into slavery and destroying the city. But there are several nuances that are often underestimated. At first glance, many imagined that in the Punic Wars, the mighty Roman Empire fought with the small African state of Carthage. However, in fact, Carthage was a huge state that occupied the territory from Egypt to Spain. At that time, the Roman Republic was just beginning to conquer the territory of modern Italy, and even it was not completely conquered. Carthage was the largest city on the planet, with a population of 300,000 by 300 BC. Even at the outbreak of the Second Punic War in 218 BC, it remained richer and more numerous than Rome. The conflict had many reasons, but the main reason was simple and understandable. The ambitious Roman state collided with the interests of the dominant Mediterranean trade, Carthage. Given that the policies, interests, and goals of the two countries were almost identical, conflict became inevitable. It is safe to say that only one of them could survive in such a situation. Many historians compare Rome and Carthage as two almost identical states. Given that their founding occurred only 50 years apart, Rome in 753 BC and Carthage in 814 BC, they also developed in roughly the same direction. But in 264 BC, a conflict arose when the Sicilian island, which controls important straits, caused friction between states. The rebels, who did not recognize Carthaginian authority, captured part of Sicily and turned to Rome with a request to join their confederation. This, unexpectedly for everyone, granted the request, which caused the wrath of Carthage, since he considered this territory his own. The first war, called the largest war of antiquity, lasted 23 years. However, it is difficult to tell about it objectively, since most of the sources are written by the Romans, who eventually won. The Romans captured Sicily, and both Roman citizens and allies fought on their side. They were driven by both monetary interest and the idea. Carthage, on the other hand, commanded its armies, consisting of various tribes and nationalities, exposing its people mainly as officers, However, due to the linguistic diversity and the specifics of the mercenaries, they often could not effectively command them. Carthage was rich and heavily armed, but its organization and ideology were no match for Rome, which proved to be the deciding factor. The peace treaty, concluded in 241 BC, took Sicily from Carthage and, although the other conditions were quite loyal, everyone understood that this was just a temporary truce and Rome would return for its own. The chances of Carthage in the second part of the conflict became extremely small. The Roman army became even more skilled and efficient. The dark genius of engineering from Rome stole and improved all the technical ideas of Carthage, and it seemed that hope was disappearing from the Africans. But then the moment came when Hannibal Barca, son of Hamilcar Barca, who was defeated in the First Punic War and entered into a peace treaty with Rome, entered the scene. However, personally, Hamilcar was an excellent general and inflicted several significant defeats on Rome, laying in the army the trademark methods that Hannibal has used since then. After the first war with Rome, Hamilcar brilliantly conquered Spain by 228 BC, and it is from there that Hannibal will begin the second phase of the conflict. But first, one more important detail. Since Carthage is located on the territory of modern Tunisia, many intuitively assumed that Hannibal and his people were Africans. In fact, they were all ethnic Phoenicians, or some kind of Semites from the territory of modern Palestine, which was once conquered by Alexander the Great. This sediment of the people around the Mediterranean continued for centuries, and the Phoenicians were considered experienced sailors of the region. In general, our Hannibal Barca, like most Carthaginians, was a typical representative of the Semitic culture, and not an African. With hatred for Rome, the guy met since childhood. It was part of his upbringing. At the age of nine, he swore an oath to become an enemy of the Roman state. At the first sign of adolescence, 
Hannibal went with his father to Spain to fight. There he struck up friendships that would later play an important role, because it was these friends who would become his associates and assistants. In Spain, Hannibal's uncle founded the city of New Carthage, which still exists and is home to 200,000 people. However, Uncle Hannibal himself was killed almost immediately because of the conspiracy. Hannibal's finest hour came when he earned the title of Commander-in-Chief in a soldier's vote, which emphasized his merits and respect among the soldiers. The disco hosted by Hannibal in Spain forced the Romans to take active measures. Rome declared the Spanish city of Saguntum its protectorate, and after its conquest by Hannibal in 218 BC, the Second Punic War began. This time, the invisible hand of fate turned against the Romans themselves, who did not take into account the reforms of Carthage and ignored its conquests in Spain for too long. They assumed that the battles would develop mainly in neutral territories, but they were mistaken. Hannibal, with 90,000 infantry, moved through Spain to Italy, was sharp as a bullet, stinging like bees, and his army passed through the Roman state, inflicting one sensitive defeat after another. One of these battles was the Battle of Cannae on August 2, 216 BC, where 50,000 Carthaginians almost completely destroyed 100,000 Roman troops. Hannibal was considered a paragon of skill in his tactics, and his military ability was considered great even by Napoleon, which is not surprising. When he captured 10,000 Romans, the flowel of the Roman army actually died at Cannae, and the country plunged into chaos. The Romans began to call even slaves for military service due to a shortage of people. Hannibal controlled a significant part of the territory of Italy during 15 years of direct clashes. While Hannibal succeeded in 21 major battles and destroyed more than 200,000 Romans according to some sources, historians often put him on a par with Alexander the Great, but objectivity does not allow drawing in ambiguous conclusions. Despite his military successes, Hannibal still lost the Second Punic War, which involved both diplomacy and the lack of timely assistance from the homeland. Hannibal actively terrorized Roman Italy, strengthening his position and enlisting the support of various tribes. However, Rome had a significant superiority in manpower and diplomacy, and Hannibal was unable to turn the Blitzkrieg in his favor. The Romans also used the relatively quiet years of the war to prepare a new army. Hannibal gradually lost his position in Italy and was forced out of it, as a result of which he began to actively defend himself. In parallel, the Romans were successful in their diplomatic efforts, opposing the Carthaginians as allies and outbidding their allies. When Hannibal became head of state, he entered into a struggle with the oligarchs, which led to his expulsion from the country. He tried to enlist the Seleucids in the war against Rome, but was not successful. As a result, in 183 BC, Hannibal died of poison in Crete at the age of 64. The Third Punic War, which began 30 years later, was actually formal, since Carthage had already been destroyed by Rome. In just three years, Rome completely eliminated the last major rival in the Mediterranean, 